So next up is the hydrangea family. Hydrangea. I used to call these little old lady plants. Great big hydrangea, garden hydrangea, blue balls all over your shrubs. But uh, I've grown to like them over the past 25 years. What do you suppose that means? Anyway, I like them because they bloom at a different time of year than everything else. They bloom in the summer, right when everything's starting to look kind of tired and overwhelmingly green. Out come the hydrangeas and they have such a lovely blue. And some of them are pink. Some of them, uh, the lace cap hydrangeas, look a little less over the top. They look a little more natural and this one has some nice variegated foliage. The PG, I like PGs. They are cone-shaped flowers, sort of like a lilac. And these shrubs are just huge. They're the size of a outbuilding. Maybe not as big as a garage, but they do get quite enormous. Sometimes they turn into little trees. And their blossoms start out white and fade to pink. Here's my lace cap hydrangea which it took every ounce of caution on my part to plant far enough away from the door that it wouldn't wind up blocking the doorway. When you plant, you have to imagine the full-size plant and ask yourself if there's room for it. And hydrangeas are very difficult to control size-wise. If you try to use some gentle size reduction with what I call the grab and snip technique where you cut some canes to the ground, cut some canes off inside, you are often uh, rewarded with an upsurge of growth, which makes the rhododendron the same size as it was before, but now it's floppy. A very bad place for a rhododendron or a hydrangea is in that place between the walkway and the house. You want something that's a lot easier to control size-wise. You want Nandinas or Japanese Holly or some nice hostas. But hydrangeas are great transplant candidates. I've never killed a hydrangea by moving it. Here's one that just came across the 520 bridge and it's in leaf. I wouldn't recommend you do it while it's in leaf because the second you water it, all those leaves will wilt immediately. So generally we wait until the hydrangea has dropped its leaves in the winter before we move it. Sometimes we even cut them to the ground and then move them because hydrangeas, although they are very difficult to reduce in size, are incredibly tough and you will not hurt them with pruning. When you transplant, you transplant it someplace it can get to be the size at once. This is a very well-sighted hydrangea. Here's my hydrangea. Now it's in the winter, all the leaves have fallen off. Let's talk about maintenance pruning. Maintenance pruning mainly consists of taking off the spent blooms. Unlike rhododendrons, the hydrangea blossoms will hang on all winter and halfway through the summer and look pretty bad. So we go out and cut those blossoms off either in the winter or the early spring just before the buds start to elongate. And you get some arguments both ways about which way to do it. Some people say you want to do it in the winter so that they look good all winter long. Other people say that those blooms protect the buds from freeze. But I just say do whatever comes natural. When you cut off those spent flowers, you want to cut down to any of the top four pairs of buds. This is how your hydrangea branch is going to look in the spring. You can see that the top four or five sets of pairs of buds are bigger than the one below it. And if you cut just above any of those pairs of buds, you will have plenty of flowers. If you cut lower, you may or may not get flowers. So this is an example of the sort of pruning that you might do as a maintenance procedure. You would take out the cane that died back when it was headed. Happens sometimes. Sometimes they flourish back. Other times they die back. 
You might want to shorten the one that's coming out over the doorway by cutting to a side branch. I'm going to head back the ones that have spent blossoms. Mr. Wrong Way, I'm going to take him off. And maybe the one that's lying on the ground. And this is what it looks like. Because hydrangeas are opposite, means there's a branch on either side, it's very hard not to leave a little stub when you cut back because you can't get your hand pruners in there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> These are not particularly fussy plants. Also note that hydrangeas have a lot of what I call mock deadwood. You think that the canes are dead because they look gray and seem sort of hollow, but you cut into them, you'll find that they're still alive. Oh my God. And you'll know that because the wood just below the bark is still green. And so maybe if you can't tell, you use your hand pruner to scrape a little bit of the bark away to see if it's alive. They sometimes die from the tip back, but they're not completely dead to the ground, so you just want to head them back to a pair of side branches. Some gardener that Plant Amnesty was interviewing for the Gardener Referral Service, uh, we asked them how did they prune hydrangeas, and he said, oh, well, I guess I used the shotgun method, which is to say he cut some of them to the ground, uh, heads some back inside, and leaves the majority of the ones, the ones that are already shorter, intact so that they will bloom next year. I should mention that some people cut their hydrangeas to the ground every year, and they will survive. They will grow back really fast. They will grow back to half the size they were before. But unlike what the books say, uh, they frequently don't bloom. Even though the books say they will, they don't. And there must be some trick to it, but I've been practicing on my hydrangeas, and I have know of nobody who can tell me what that trick might be. So if you cut your hydrangea to the ground, by which I mean six inches off the ground or two feet off the ground, you will get a shorter hydrangea, but only for a year. It won't bloom. The next year it will bloom, but it'll be the same size as it was before, or pretty close to that size. Bad news. But if for some reason you have to cut your hydrangea to the ground, don't worry, you're not going to hurt it. Say maybe you needed to paint the fence. This would be an easy thing to do and not a problem for the plant whatsoever. Do note that hard pruning does create growth which is sort of soft and floppy, and hard pruning does make for extra large blossoms. Some people cut their hydrangeas back hard and are dismayed to find that the new growth is uh, that they're nodding their heads on the cement because the blooms are extra heavy and the branches are extra soft and floppy because of the hard pruning. The cure for that is just ignore it until those branches become woodier and stronger. Here's an oak leaf hydrangea. Notice that its head is on the ground. I would probably cut that one off to make things look better. And I wouldn't worry about it. I would either just cut off the head or take that whole cane back to the ground. Oak leaf hydrangeas are one of the few hydrangeas that can take a little drought stress. Most of them really, 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 really need extra water. It's right in their name, hydrangea. The oak leaf, on the other hand, will turn more brilliant red colored leaves if you give it a little bit of sun and drought stress. They have that very kind of creamy, God, it just reminds me of lace, uh, very beguiling, creamy white, and it too fades to pink. All the girls love that. The uh, oak leaf hydrangea can also be cut to the ground and regrown. It won't keep it small. In this case, I had to cut this hydrangea to the ground in order to get a vine going on a trellis behind it. Oak leaf hydrangeas are also very floppy. The very best looking one, the, all the branches flop down to the ground and then turned back up. But it makes for a very large shrub. Generally, I do not recommend that people tie up their plants. When I see uh, shrubs that have been tied back in the landscape, I assume that the pruner just doesn't know how to prune. Otherwise, they would have fixed it with their pruning shears. But uh, the oak leaf might be an exception. Do remember to retie it periodically so that you don't girdle it. 
This is a climbing hydrangea, one of the only well-behaved vines that I know, the only kind of a vine that I might uh, actually approve of growing up a tree because it won't strangle it or hurt it. And it also has those nice creamy white lacy flowers. It also has a really nice branch structure. It needs something solid to climb on though. It looks best on a wall, not a trellis. Uh, so I, if you have a short brick wall, I would highly recommend the hydrangea vine. I also like how it sounds, hydrangea vine. And if you need to prune it, don't worry about it. You can uh, nibble it back any place. Sometimes they go to the top of the wall and then they start piling up on themselves and start hanging out over and looking kind of uh, top heavy. Uh, you can and should, after it's through blooming, prune it back with vigor, maybe not all over in the same year because that might reduce your blooms, but uh, in places and at times and keep up on it. And if by chance you have to whack the whole thing back all at once, go ahead. You're not going to hurt it. It just might not bloom for a year. And even if you have to cut it to the ground, peel it off the side of the house so that you can, I don't know, uh, re-grout the bricks, you can do that and then let it grow right back up. Hydrangeas are very tough. The uh, climbing hydrangea does take a while to get established and looks a little moth-eaten the first few years. Just be patient. It will eventually grab hold and uh, start looking better. Can you do renovation pruning on a hydrangea? You certainly can. As I said before, you can cut it to the ground, by which I mean, oh, probably three inches to two feet off the ground and regrow it. Uh, if you were to do this thing, when would you do it? That's a good question. I would do it probably in the winter or early spring, which we mean February around here. Here is a ladies' landscape where we have cut down all the hydrangeas and all the lavateras. You can kind of see their stubs there. And this is the growth in one year. Actually, we don't know if this is the before picture or the after picture because they look exactly the same. And she just felt that her hydrangeas were too big for this area. And after we tried the old cutting it back to the ground and letting it regrow system, they were still too big. So we dug them up and carried them someplace else. Nothing like rearranging your plants. It's a better solution than pruning many, many cases.